Hey there folks and friends, Connecting Dots here. Fukushima Day 995, this is kind of my part two video. If you haven't seen this video I, I uploaded earlier today, uh, I encourage you to go check it out. It's a uh, uh, recently released uh, map from the uh, Chinese and Korean government, the uh, oceanography, engineering, technology uh, sector have released this map. It's, uh, you know, it's, uh, <clears throat> there's missing a lot of information here and it's, I've mentioned it in the video itself, but today, uh, or in, I should say in this video, I'm going to specifically stick with um, the spread itself and I've lined up the two videos here. This is the Fukushima Day 995. You can see here December 20th, 2013 and you can see where the plume looks like and this is the hidden video and uh, according to this, uh, this is posted on any news and everything you'll see in this video is all linked down below in the uh, show more box if you want to see it. He says that this anim animation was left on the server and found by randomly typing in guesses for the URL address. Note that the ocean releases used for this model appear to end soon after March 2011. This means the daily release of 400 tons of radioactive water that's likely been going on since the disaster began is not being accounted for, which is something I mentioned in my video of Fukushima, Fukushima, excuse me, Fukushima Day 995. I also mentioned here how they didn't take into account the fact that there has been uh, some of the wastewater, we've had uh, multiple leaks, uh, we've had uh, the fallout itself over the ocean. I mean, we've had some of the initial fallout go inland into the Japan, but you know, lucky for them, the wind, or and lucky for us, the wind was heading uh, across the Pacific Ocean, so it pulled out most of the uh, uh, radiation that was emitted from the plants uh, uh, into the air up in the atmosphere, and some of it may have fallen out over the Pacific Ocean in the uh, days after. Regardless, uh, the point is um, everything is wrong in this data as far as how much uh, radiation has been spewed into the ocean, Pacific Ocean, because we have an ongoing leak here folks, you realize that. It's a triple meltdown. Three China syndromes. Uh, I've mentioned before in Fukushima Day 669 there's 10 million becquerels spewing out of reactor 1, 2, and 3 every single hour. That's 240 million becquerels per day. So we have an ongoing um, um, air, air atmosphere contamination, and we have also 400 tons of uh, wastewater that's being leaked uh, from into the Pacific Ocean. So everything is wrong here, but it's uh, I'm using this because I want folks to see that this is what they're showing to the public. Now on the other map, the hidden one, uh, which is lined up around for the same date, December 20th here, 2013, uh, the spread is already wider, uh, as you can see here, it's a little wider, and also, you'll see very shortly here, the ending, just how far it gets in this dispersion map, the hidden one that was found in, on the server, versus what's been published here publicly. So I'm just going to fast forward so you don't have to watch the whole thing, and here we are, we are in year 2039. There's almost nothing left here, and absolutely nothing in the Indian Ocean. Take a look at the hidden one. I'll fast forward again. What year is that? 2038. Lots of it. Lots of it. And it doesn't stop. In fact, it starts earlier on. Uh, I mean, here, I'll back up a little bit. This is good for those of you who live in Australia. You know, a lot of folks, oh, I'm not going to be, I'm not too worried about Fukushima. I live in the, you know, in the Southern Hemisphere. Well, it's it's coming home, folks. It's coming right to your front door. Yeah, your seafood, your local restaurant. Here we go. That's 2017 right there. I mean, uh, this dispersion map goes up to the year 2041. That's only 2019. I'll fast forward so you can take a look. You, you know, things aren't great. And they're about to get much worse because, as I mentioned, we have an ongoing leak. 
Okay, so the reason I made this video is because some of you may have been paying attention from the beginning. The massive die-offs here we've seen in the Pacific Ocean since Fukushima went off. Uh, the very first thing I believe was the uh, seals that had lesions and uh, the sea lions were dying along the Alaska Aleutian coast. And thereafter we had the uh, polar bears that had the same lesions. Uh, or shortly thereafter we had the sea turtles washing up, uh, deep sea sea turtles washing up on Vancouver Island, that's where I live. Uh, you know, uh, we've had stories of whales, all kinds of fish, and now, well, it's the starfish, and this is just played recently here, uh, they made a story on, uh, what is it again? Uh, I don't watch the news, NBC, that's what it is. So I'm going to play a little clip here, and uh, yeah, um, we have reasons to be concerned here. The die-off has decimated the starfish population in this cove. Two species that used to thrive here have now vanished. Sea stars, commonly known as starfish, are natural predators. Feeding on mussels and clams that can overpopulate and tip this fragile ecosystem out of balance. Are you worried this could be the canary in the coal mine? Absolutely. We've got a holding tank. Dr. Michael Murray says the disease has even penetrated the filtration system at the Monterey Bay Aquarium. So we draw our water in out of Monterey Bay. Whatever it is that it must be in the water is affecting our animals as well. It's in the water for sure, folks. You saw that dispersion map here. Uh, if you saw Fukushima Day 995, um, or I imagine many of you are going to go rush out and see it now, they're, they're talking about the radiation here on the West Coast sticking around for an extended period, over 10 years. And that's with the small release, the initial release that they're going by. We have an ongoing situation. That water contamination leaking from those uh, reactors 1, 2, and 3, the 400 tons leaking out daily, they're talking 35 years before that's contained. I don't know what to say. Uh, some of you are going to catch on real fast here. It's time to get off the seafood. You know, and even here, folks are worried about this might be Fukushima. I'm, thankfully, man, I can't believe it. This is finally getting some recognition here. And folks are going to start one, getting their Geiger counters going. And Yeah, I don't know what to say. Uh, I guess uh, we're ahead of the curve, folks. Those of you who got your Geiger counters doing your own testing, you know, I'm going to put out some stories here from David Suzuki and even from University of Victoria, where I live here. They're talking about doing rainfall checks. We've been doing that. Uh, yeah, we're way ahead of the curve. But nothing is off the table. I mean, I've had probably 100 emails thus far saying, well, what about Fukushima? Because of radiation. We haven't ruled that out yet, but we're clearly not ruling that in. The well, they're going to start uh, ruling it in real fast. I imagine these uh, die-outs are going to start spreading here because, like I mentioned, uh, reactor, here's a one, two, and three. They're both in trouble. They're spewing out into the uh, atmosphere 10 million becquerels every single hour, and they're leaking 400 tons of radioactive contaminated wastewater every single day. It, you know, this is far from over. So yeah, this is all about it spreading into the Pacific Ocean and how they originally thought it was just going to come here. Well, you saw from that map, it was spreading elsewhere into the uh, other oceans and that's all because of the Great Ocean Conve Conveyor Belt. So if it's not on your door today, it's coming soon. I hope it's a concern of yours. I hope this uh, wakes you up and say, hey, hey, the guy's onto something. Darn right. And lo, lo and behold, wouldn't it ha just so happen here in November? 30th, 2013. This is a uh, mention here on Fukushima uh, Diary, Diary. This guy's doing a great job here, keeping up on this stuff. Uh, he says the highest reading of all beta nuclides detected in seaside of reactor number two, 1.1 billion becquerels per square meter. That's right, the highest level so far. It goes on to say that uh, just a couple of days before, on the 25th, it was at 910. Uh, uh, million becquerels per square meter, meters, then it rose up by 120% in just three days. So yeah, uh, we're far, uh, this is far from being over uh, and you know this is all because of that underwater ocean current. Okay, it's right off the coast of uh, Japan, pulls it right over here to us and then it spreads all about folks. So it comes in low comes to the top, it's going to get taken into conveyor belt, cross everywhere. I hate to say it, but if, if, time to wake up. Okay, so if you don't know anything about the fish yet, 
you can Google this, Fukushima Day 444. I made this great video here. Uh, sorry, I, I don't mean to, to brag, but I believe anyone who is not concerned about their food yet will be concerned after they watch Fukushima Day 444. Because if you think that the tuna is just caught locally and it's only because the tuna was off the coast of Japan, no, they get around, folks. Anyways, that's it for this uh, video. Hope you share it. Take care.